Okay, so I've done a couple of 3v3 battles. I think it's time to do uh, a little 1v1 action and feature that. Here's a very fun battle between High Elves and Dark Elves. Classic matchup, except that we're at the Black Pyramid. I have no idea why the High Elves and Dark Elves are here. Maybe they know something that we don't. Uh, this is a traditional matchup between High Elves and Dark Elves. I didn't want to do anything too crazy. I'm playing the Dark Elf forces with Malkith. Uh, and his uh, legendary opponent on the other side is Tyrion. Interestingly, the High Elves decided not to bring a mage, which I think is generally a bad idea, but they wanted to go a little bit wider. Um, and there's uh, an interesting use of uh, infantry here with uh, two Great Eagles. So I guess the idea was the Great Eagles were going to just try and um, pin down uh, blocks of infantry and tie them up or cavalry and just kind of interrupt things. And then these this main line of archers was going to uh, do the killing. Uh, and, and to protect these, man, this main line of archers, you have a front line of spearmen and flanked with a couple of white lions for a bit of armor pen. Very simple list. On my roster, I wanted to have some mobility with two uh, uh, dark riders with repeater crossbows. Uh, some a front line of bleak swords which generally trades well with uh, the high elf spearmen so i like to bring bleak swords in this matchup especially to screen for the archers uh dark shards i brought them with shields because i didn't want them getting sniped out from the archers before they even reached the front line and then uh, a couple of witch elves as glue in case there were some dragon princes or heavy uh, cavalry that i needed to tie down in place and then two units of executioners to just cut up everything so all that said um Let's see what happens uh, and how this how this plays out. So initial engagements, the Dark Riders were positioning onto the flank uh, because they wanted to be able to snipe at the white lines of trace while out of the range of the archers. If I hold down space here, you can see the archers were initially facing forward and were not uh, in position of these Dark Riders. That changes quickly though. They do they do rotate over. So in the opening volleys here. Uh, some shots going off at the Great Eagle, return fire from the archers. I knew that I needed to peel out of range uh, and get them to safety. So the High Elves have rotated their entire forces over, trying to face up uh, with the Dark Elf units. In the, from my perspective, I start pushing the bleak, for, bleak swords forward to the front. Maybe this, is what, this wasn't the best uh, positioning because you'll notice the line of fire for the High Elves is right across here, the archer range, and I have this unit going in before the other unit. So what I should have done is I should have squared up first with all three bleak sword units just outside of the range of the archer fire and then pushed in. So a little mistake on my part and uh, the High Elf player makes me pay, I lose a lot of uh, this bleak sword unit before these other ones uh, move into that dangerous firing range. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, bleak swords are intended to take uh, archer fire uh, with their shield defense. You can see them raising their shields up into the air. So they're doing what they're supposed to do, which is take that initial archer fire. If I were the high elf player, as soon as these higher value targets like the witch elves, the um, Hargath, Harganath Executioners, where are they? Here, came into range. I would have switched target from the Bleak Swords to those other value units, but there was a, a lot going on at this point in time, and I'm, I think the High Elf player probably had their hands full with the Micro. So you can see that the uh, Phoenix Guard are starting to shift into position here, looking to clog up the cracks, but note, recognizing this, I send my Harganath Executioners over in this direction, and if they can match up with the Phoenix Guard, that's a fantastic uh, situation for me. I decided to go a little bit wide, pushing the Witch Elves towards the flank. This is a bad uh, engagement for me with the Witch Elves because the Phoenix Guard do have very high armor. Uh, so the Witch Elves are probably going to have some trouble cutting through it efficiently. But they do have a bonus versus infantry. So, you know, maybe not the worst thing in the world. But I decided to try and uh, hold off here for now and then instead position the armor pen of these dark shards uh, and dark riders with repeated crossbows onto the high value and low mobility Phoenix Guard because. Uh, they don't have um, they don't have any um, uh, shields. It looks like I am shooting at the uh, Great Eagle initially here, but I do eventually transition over to the 
to the Phoenix Guard. And same thing on this flank. So the initial volleys uh, going into the Phoenix Guard from the Dark Shards. Recognizing this, the High Elf player wisely decides to dive his Eagle into the Dark Shards. So I'm forced to make a decision. Uh, will I bring my Spears over and help out? And how am I going to keep this Eagle in place? Malkith dropping uh, a word of pain across the archer line. This is just to prevent them from shooting a little bit. It does do some pretty nice damage, actually. And you'll see that's something that I often do, is to try and hit those those archer lines with the um, chill wind. Malkith and the uh, Cold One Riders have gotten into this front line. They've managed to break off the uh, White Lines of Trace, who I dropped a word of pain on because they are a high damage infantry with a low uh, melee defense. So if with a word of pain, it essentially renders this unit useless. And then you have Malkith, Hargan Ex Executioners, and Cold One Knights going up against one unit of Spears. Uh, that's a very good engagement for me. I'm not sure what happened here. I think this was a bit of a misplay by my opponent. The Phoenix Guard started pushing into the back line and, and they have no place here. The Phoenix Guard are a defensive unit. What they should be doing is pushing over towards these Cold One Spear Riders and uh, doing some work there. Tyrion has come into the fight here trying to anchor his front line uh, and specifically engage Malkith. That is a perfect engagement for Tyrion. And if the High Elves are going to win this game, Tyrion absolutely needs to stick on Malkith and zone him out to prevent his magic from turning the tide in our favor. What you'll notice on this flank is what I've done is I've sent the Dark Riders with the repeater crossbows to come over here and pin the Great Eagle in place so that it gives time for the uh, Dread Spears to come and uh, help out uh, on the Great Eagle with their anti-large bonus. The Dark Riders with repeater crossbows themselves are not great uh, melee units, but they can, in a pinch, be used to pin cavalry in place, and that's exactly what I do here. Uh, so meanwhile these archers are shooting into this what's now become a blob so i have to be careful to not leave them in con in this situation for any longer than necessary over over here the witch elves have come into the combat they've found two units of spearmen this is a perfect uh, engagement for them aside for, aside from being in archers or tying up cav because they will absolutely mulch through this infantry in no time and that will create a huge opening in the center so that I can push through mid. Over here the Phoenix Guard did chop up some bleak swords but I'm not too concerned about that because I have the uh, overwatch fire from the bleak swords coming into the Phoenix Guard and now Keith is around uh, if he needs to interrupt for a second uh, to prevent them from moving up he can do so. Right here is a nice little uh, charge through the middle now that the spearmen have been pulled over by the witch elves that exposes this archer back line. So I've taken the dark riders with repeater crossbows. Again, they're not great with only a 23 melee attack, but a charge bonus against uh, archers who are also uh, terrible with uh, melee defense is going to be a good engagement for me. And it's going to pull these Phoenix Guard away from the fight over here, um, enabling the bleak swords and... and these units to sort of wrap up the right flank. Malkith has escaped from Tyrion, so Tyrion is fighting uh, Harganath Executioners. The, I mean, with Tyrion's support, the White Lions are going to be able to uh, win this engagement, but the Harganath Executioners are going to chop up a bunch of White Lions before that happens. Malkith Recognizing that this is the largest blob of High Elf infantry drops a, a, a Soul Stealer. Um, the, if, if I can get these White Lions off of the field, then there's really not much that can fight my Harganath Executioners um, or deal with, speed-wise, the, um, the, the, the Dark Shards with shields, aside from the, the Great Eagle. The Soul Stealer was very helpful because it dropped uh, a lot of damage onto Tyrion and now Malkith is running around with full health. Meanwhile, Overwatch from the Dark Shards pouring into these Phoenix Guard. The Great Eagle is inactive, not for long, but uh, I've had a little bit of time to pressure this backline and I think that's where 
the high elf player's uh, attention is concentrated. The Hargan F executioners are going to uh, make one, one little charge into here with the Dark Riders. The executioners themselves are quite slow, but with the support of the Dark Riders to pin things in place, you have a lot of utility. Malkith comes over here just to, to wind up this flank. With the leadership, normally sending Malkith into a unit of Phoenix Guard is not a good choice, but with the leadership so low here, he's able to sort of break this unit. And again, the, the Overwatch fire from the, the Dark Shards is going to be a good situation for me. With the low unit count too, he can just peel away, so no problems there. Tyrion's faced with a decision here. Do I go into the Dark Shards or do I go after Malkith? He goes after the Dark Shards, I believe. Yeah, I mean, which again, he can do it, but it's, it's going to take him a little while to chop through all of these Dark Shards. And for him to win the, the battle, he really needs to find Malkith. I mean, he's a duelist. And chopping up Dark Shards, he could have done that with the White Lions of Trace. He could have done that with the Bleak, with the Spearmen. He needed Tyrion on Malkith. So he does eventually do that. Um, the Great Eagle has gotten into the Dark Shards in the back. So two units of Dark Shards fleeing. These units, which were chasing off the other Great Eagle, are now free to go either go help out uh, and pin the second Eagle, or they can just uh, start helping out in the mainline engagement. Most of the other back line is gone now. Uh, looks like I forgot about a unit of Cold Ones here, but uh, the Harganath Executioners are going to engage with the Phoenix Guard. That's a perfect engagement for me because of their high armor pen. A chill wind goes down to just freeze these in place and make sure that the Harg and F executioners are free to make contact. Malkith, because he had the support of the spearmen, he was able to pull out. And I send in a unit of bleak swords just to tie up the spearmen, do a little damage on the remaining very weakened white line of trace. And then with Malkith and unit of Harg and F executioners, I try and break off the uh, last unit of uh, archers. So I'm going to fast forward here because at this point the battle is pretty much done. Malkith goes into the center here. Tyrion tries to do his last bit of work, but there's just too many forces remaining and the bar uh, tips in my favor. So pyrrhic victory for Malkith. Poor Tyrion. I, I, let's go to the battle screen. So good game to roaming Ronin. Uh, Tyrion, he's an absolute monster duelist, but he's also and he's a fantastic tank. But without magic support and without the ability to stick on Malkith, uh, it's going to be very hard for the, the High Elves to win this battle. Uh, Harganath executioners. I mean, if the High Elves don't have cavalry or at least one unit of swordmasters, they are an absolute nightmare for the High Elf to deal with. And again, I think the archers probably should have been shooting in with these high threat at these high threat units early in the game to uh, try and take them off the field. Granted, uh, archers don't have a very high armor pen, so maybe mixing in one unit of Sisters of Avalorn would have been useful for sniping out these uh, high value infantry units. Uh, overall, very fun matchup, and I played a couple games with Ronin that were also good, so maybe if I, I, I match up against him again a few times, I'll, I'll post some of the other battles. He did be in the first match we played, so unfortunately I don't have that replay to share. So thanks again. Bye.